Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of MFS's Let's Talk Property podcast, where we connect with industry experts to explore an array of topics within the dynamic world of property. Before we dive into today's episode, I just want to take a moment to share a quick disclaimer. MFS are a bridging loan and buy-to-let mortgage provider and are not financial advisors. The opinions and views expressed in this episode are personal to the host and the guests and may not reflect the views of MFS. For more information on MFS, you can find us at www.mfsuk.com and be sure to keep up with our podcast updates on Instagram at MFS underscore LTP. Now let's get started. Hi guys, welcome to the latest episode of Let's Talk Property with MFS where we have Arthur joining us today from Living Guardians. We're going to talk all things guardianship. So Arthur, thank you very much for coming along today. Much appreciated. Um, We were having a conversation earlier. It's something that's quite widely used in the market, but not many people know about it. So can you give us sort of a little rundown or an explanation on guardianship and, you know, the uses for it and how how people use it? Well, property guardianship is basically where we put young professionals and key workers to live in empty properties. Amazing. Um, Our business model is that we don't charge the owner for our service. So basically it's essentially free to owners. And the typical client would be a developer, the fraud, fraud. A property that they've been on the planning commission to convert to resi or whatever, and it's going to sit empty for six to nine months. And because uh, we don't charge the owner, you know, it's very cost effective for the owner. Uh, whereas if you were to employ a 24 hour security guard, it would probably cost you £3,000 a week. So, a huge saving. Mm. It sounds like there's a lot of benefits from it, not just the cost saving as well, but the security aspect that comes with it, knowing that nothing can happen whilst you're. Basically, the law in the UK as it currently stands, you can only squat in a, an unoccupied property. So the fact that we put people to live in the building, we can mm. occupy them. Even though those people are key workers, they're young professionals, they go out to work every day, um, no one gets squatted because it's occupied, even though they're actually at work. So would it be the guardian that comes in that pays maybe a, a rent of some description, so they're, they're the ones that pay you? Yeah. So our business model is that we take a nominal license fee we can't really wait because they're not tenants they are licensees which means we get on one to leave on 28 days notice and they pay us a nominal 50 60 cents per a week and so they get to live in cool buildings the others get a village protected for nothing and we are the few pounds along the way as well fantastic so the process of onboarding a guardian or someone is it very similar to to Similar process of renting a property where you sort of do a background check on who they are and very similar. I mean, you know, we they would apply online on our website, and um, when we have any property that is suitable for them in the area that want to live, we would invite them to the viewing. They have to then provide their paperwork and do a full registration and vetting process on them, both in terms of financial and eligibility and um, whether they're suitable to be a guardian. And then if they like it, they fill in the paperwork and off they go. Um, so when it comes to people requesting your services, is it normally a last minute thing or I'm guessing whether you're working with developers, they know in advance that they're going to be acquiring a site or anything like that. When do they normally try and generally get in contact with you and request your services? Either before they buy the site or, or you know, once they bought it. Sometimes we'd be able to go in before they bought it to um, you know, have a look around and see what's needed to be done to make sure it's compliant for health and safety reasons. Because obviously it's one thing stopping squatting and another totally different ball game it's, it's health and safety yeah. the garden. we make sure that the property is compliant before we move the garden is into gotcha so it's got to be in a good standard previously for someone to be able to live in there for, for not necessarily i mean we, we have taken buildings that are not in a very good condition we've also taken buildings which have been squatted and okay. we will arrange the clearance of stuff the squatters leave behind that then we will make sure the metrics comply we have the far, our own fire alarm engineers we make sure the fire alarms comply and obviously, very important, you know, boilers are service that make sure we have the best savings. Okay, cool. So, what's the general onboarding process? How long does it normally take from someone inquiring to you being able to get someone through the door? How long does that process generally take? Um, normally a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we have actually managed to move guardians in in, in the space of four hours, provided so they come with all their paperwork. Oh. So, we can, we can move quite quickly because obviously it's important to get the building protected as quickly as possible. So, we really do, do it quickly. Safely and compliantly. Fantastic. So I know you touched on it earlier, and we did. I was reading on your website the other day that you have a twenty-eight day rolling contract. Is that standard across the industry, or is it something specifically that you guys tend to work with? Uh, it's generally standard, and that that comes from the protection from eviction act, because people are living in the property. Minimum notice you can give yeah. is twenty-eight days under protection from eviction. 
future. And so if we give them 28 days, we would ask our clients and property owners to give us slightly more of that, so it gives us two or three days to serve the notice and get the process started for you know, taking the guardians out of the property. Uh, but what we normally do, we normally move them to a new building. Okay. Uh, we've had guardians that have been with us for seven, eight, nine, ten years now. They've moved from property to property. It's great for them. And if you ask the guardians why they're being guardians, with the standard answer would be A, save money, yep. B, save up, buy a property. Yeah, and you can obviously see the huge advantages there on, on both sides. Like you said, you've got someone, especially today in central London, with rents the way they are, it's near enough impossible to be able to pay your rent, put a decent amount of money aside to, to yeah. get a mortgage. So I can really see the I advantage. Mean, our, our sort of rates basically work out roughly half price. Yeah. A lot of the buildings include utilities and council tax as well. So the guardians will know they've got to pay X every month. They're not going to get a shock at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter with a massive gas bill or the utility bill. Especially some of the larger properties that are probably. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, obviously, you know, the world is also a very strange place at the moment, the cost of living crisis, and we've had a massive um, you know, uptake of people wanting to be guardians. Yeah, I can I can imagine, especially with the cost of living crisis and everything else like that. I bet you've had a huge influx of, of people. Is there a specific, you know, what's the most popular type of the guardians? Young, young professionals that buy to do this. Yeah, young professionals, I'd say. And then people that want to have different experiences. I mean, uh, they, you know, they're happy to move across London, live in different areas. Uh, they put it down to fine art, they hire a, a van, they move their stuff, and they go from one property to another. Professionals. I suppose, you know, if you're getting planning requirements and doing that process, you normally get a reasonable amount of time within the property because planning decisions aren't generally, generally quick. What's the sort of average time that a guardian will spend in a property? A minimum contract with them over it is, is three months. Okay. In London, six months out of London. Um, but some guardians, we, we had a property which we gave back last year. Uh, we had it seven years. Uh, it was the former Stretton Police Station. It took them about five years to get their planning. We were trying to sell it. It took a while to sell it. So, yeah, we, that's our, our so record building. They were living in years. a police station for seven years. So, amazing. Um, so, the market itself, is it is it regulated at all? Are there any sort of regulatory bodies? It's not regulated, but we, we used to get shoehorned um, in with the normal Housing Act legislation, which personally, I don't think it should apply to us to what we think is temporary. We have to apply for HMO licenses okay. uh, in all the properties that we're in, and it's a five year license. Often we're only there for a year, but that's, that's the nature of the game. And we have to obviously tick the boxes, make sure we're compliant, which we do. And again, there's a safety element because the council will come and check the building and make sure that you know, everything is, is uh, in accordance with the safety. So how long does it generally take you, I suppose, if, if councils are on getting a, a HMO licences, do you find certain areas are very quick at it? And they yeah, certain, certain areas are quick, certain areas are slow. Every council's got different criteria. Some you need a licence with more than five people, some it's more than three. They have mandatory licensing, additional licensing, mm. selective licensing. It's a bit of a minefield. Yeah, the only reason I talk this from experience, we do have a lot of people purchasing HMOs for the exact same reasons, ranging from anything from a five bed up to a, a 30 bed. And yeah, some of them charge per room, some of them charge per property, some of them have a cap on it. It, it really is a bit of a large field, but we, we've, you know, we've been doing it for the last five or six years now, and we've come quite good at it. Yeah, well, by the sounds of it, you guys have got the majority of the market share currently. Are there any other businesses, or you, you guys are obviously the main one that we've seen and heard of? No, there's other companies as well. Uh, we actually started uh, the sort of trade association, the Property Guardian Providers Association, oh, uh, three or three years ago, because there were some companies who we thought were not adhering to the safety legislation, a few cowboys in the industry, and we wanted to set ourselves apart from the others. So we have three companies that joined the PGPA, and between the three companies, we probably that's probably 70, 80 percent of the market. Wow. And to be honest with you, it's a bunch of all industries, isn't it? You get the uh, people who want to do it the right, the right way and the correct way. People are looking at longevity, and the people who just want to uh, not do what you need to do. Well, unfortunately, some of the early companies in the industry were were the most ethical. They uh, broke lots of rules, and um, you know, so we want to make sure that you know we, we didn't do that. And we also we get audited by uh, fire authority, so they will come and check on our buildings okay. and make sure that they are compliant. It's a primary authority partnership with Hampshire Fire and Rescue, and so they will come and 
select a random set of our buildings each year to make sure that they comply. And if we've got any you know, concerns, we call them into the committee to, to, to you know, come and check out our bit. Yeah, so you're always on top of things, really, the regulations, the gas safety, anything that involves yeah, yeah. all are. We are an in-house maintenance team, and they're all got the accreditations, the fire alarm engineers got the faith accreditation, the accreditation, the accreditation, the accreditation, the accreditation, so we, we won't do it properly. But we touched on earlier about the, the cost of living in the pandemic, um, and the issues that it's caused across the country. So have you seen a huge influx of people that are looking to be a guardian now? Yeah, you know, once the sort of cost of living prices kicked in, we noticed a massive upsurge when people applied to be guardians. I mean, at any one time, we've probably got a house peak of our waiting list. But wow. um, you know, more recently, that's gone up to nearly two, three thousand people. So the sort of supply, we've got demand for our strip supply to the guardians looking for property. Fantastic. And then generally, on at any one time, and that's sort of a, you know, you probably have like 30 buildings at one time, or what's your sort of average properties you normally have under your, your management? We've well, yeah. got about 70 properties at the moment, and bizarrely it works out roughly 10 property in the middle, some are small, some are big, some yeah. are 30 guardians, some are five. So, an yeah. average, you know, 10 or slightly less. So, we've got about 500 guardians. It's an impressive number. So, no management. I was going to say, I don't envy your paperwork, that's for sure. <laughs> so, how do people inquire about becoming a guardian? So, what's the, you know, if someone's interested after hearing our episode today, would they normally just head over to your website? Yeah, go to the website. There's uh, you know, a few keys on there. There's two types of the website. There's the owner side, folks looking for our service, and there's the guardian side, obviously, people want to become guardians. So, what they would do, they would fill in an uh, online application form, indicate which areas they like to live in. If we have anything available in those areas, we've got some straight away. If not, we keep on filing when we get building in those areas. The environment's all good. So, you, you effectively match the guardian to the property based on what they're looking for, yeah. effectively. Is, is this nationally, do you do it, or is it? No, we do it sort of within an hour of, of London. Okay. Because we always want to be able to get to the properties if there's issues and we need to manage them and deal with maintenance. So and we do roughly all the time it's now from our office, which is in North London. Although, Recently, we've taken on a couple of buildings slightly further than that, Canterbury, Kent. Okay. We knew we were going to get them for two years, so um, it's worth taking them on. Well, uh, they're a bit further back. Well, the travel. And then, obviously, you do you have a specific maintenance team that's permanently employed for you? So, as soon as there's an issue, you pick up the phone and off they, off they yeah. go. We decided very early on as a business we wanted to have our own house maintenance team because obviously we can control them. There's nothing worse than and water pouring through your sea and you read a plumber and he says, I'll be there a week on Wednesday. Yeah. It doesn't really help. <laughs> and charge you five pounds a match. We've got the guys that, you know, they're our team. And if there's an emergency, obviously we'll pull them off whatever the job they're doing and yeah. we'll get them to do all the work. How many people in that team, roughly? 20. 20. Wow, so yeah. it's a big team yeah. as well. Plumbers, electricians, all rounders, maintenance people, uh, fire alarm engineers, electricians. So yeah, it's across the board. You must do a bit of property on the side yourself as well. No, no, no. This is, keeps us all busy. I, mean, I, I can only imagine. And so, every day is different. I mean, there was some drama, some problem, some issue coming up. So, uh, I think that's property all over at the yeah. minute, isn't it? <laughs> Whether you're working in the guardianship side or the, the investor side, there's always going to be issues and it's about how you overcome them. So how do you see guardianship faring over the next 12 months? Do you see it keep on? Yeah, yeah so, I think yeah. Demand and obviously the economy is slowing down slightly. So, people who are the developers of building offices they are going to sit empty. So, we've been asked to protect uh, to empty buildings, particularly when they've been finished and they're over. Someone will come in and steal the copper or steal their boilers. Yeah. So, we, we do offer a slightly different service called Living Caretakers, where we have uh, ex British military personnel who will go and live in buildings, which are really for short term situations, maybe. Um, yes. Two or three weeks or a month, whereas the guardianship is always a minimum of three months. Okay. Interesting. So you can offer all ends of the scale, really. That's right. And I personally think you're going to be a lot busier with a lot more people with interest rates in the market going is you're getting a lot more people now wanting to start transacting and start building again. And I think you're going to see a real, real influx and uh, look forward to watching the, the rest of your journey. So we normally like to end up with a, a quick fire round. Um, so what three? What are the three key things people should look at when they're trying to keep their property secure, and safe? I'd say cost, flexibility, and speed. So we can react really quickly, get into a building. Well, our record is two hours to get into a building. Obviously, the costs are important for the landlords and the owners. 
to keep the cost down and the flexibility that we were signing a bit of a three month contract, but thereafter it's on a, on a month's notice. So if the planning takes longer than yeah. expected, it takes nine months, they get to nine months, they'll give us a month's notice, we'll leave the guardians out, they get their building back in vacant possession. Fantastic. I suppose that's the best thing about having that 28 day rolling contract, isn't it? Because with planning, you don't know whether it's going to be three months, three years. When I first started this business, I took on a building in Hampstead and I said to the client, you know, our minimum is three months. He said, well, I only want you for nine weeks. And it suited me because we had a building going back. I knew I could move the guardians. Once the other, we were there for five years. <laughs> so you never know, especially when it comes to it. I want to say a massive thank you for coming on and telling all our listeners about guardianship and how it works uh, and Thank you yeah, for having me. very much looking forward to, to watching your guys journey and i'll be doing some research on this as well so uh, thank, thank you. you very much thank you if you've enjoyed this episode please don't forget to subscribe like and share you can access our previous episodes in all the usual places as well as on our website at www.mfsuk.com slash podcast you can also stay connected with us on instagram at mfs underscore ltp see you next time